What's good, y'all? Today we're taking a look at the prelim main event. We got a lightweight matchup. Trey Ogden, who is 16 and 6, takes on the 37 year old. Kurt Hollibaugh has revitalized his career, winning the Ultimate Fighter Veterans versus Rookies. And he is now into the UFC as the winner of that season to take on Trey Ogden. Both fighters are former regional champions. Kurt and Titan FC, Trey Ogden and Fury FC. So I am super interested to have a look at some of these guys' past performances to try and give you guys a breakdown that may leave you with the best bet or help you avoid a bad bet. So without further ado... Oh, Till's out! It's over! It's over! It's over! It's gonna say it, boy! Oh! oh it's over! It's over, Munoz! So Kurt Hollenbach comes in as the underdog for this contest. He's plus 135 around. He's going to take an inch reach advantage. He is 20 and 7 and 8 no as an amateur. Uh, he has an impressive 17 finishes in his professional record. He is a heavy boxing focused fighter on the feet. His best work is probably in his grappling in my opinion, not prioritizing it when you watch him fight. But still, stacking up 10 submission wins throughout his career, making up 50% of his professional wins. He's now 37. I think that's a big factor in pushing him towards the underdog side. He's been fighting since 2011 this is his second UFC stint as I mentioned in the intro he went winless in 2018 19 and in three fights but was in the featherweight division he's now in the lightweight division he brings some of the speed from that division his boxing style is more simple focuses on the one twos he may make sense things here and there but heavy priority in the one two boxing style but now coming back as the lightweight into the ultimate fighter took home the ultimate fighter title in his most recent fight against Austin Hubbard that's where we'll begin we start the first round Hubbard lands a takedown he lands two in total in that first round landing takedowns when he did feel threatened it does feel like Kurt does concede takedowns rather easily I did see that in his earlier fights as well in the featherweight division against Barcelos he gave up a takedown or two so that may be a place to worry for giving up time in terms of a decision we get into the second round and that's where he starts to do his best work again really overwhelming very simple boxing style sticks to the one two and he does do it with a lot of forward pressure and he starts to overwhelm Austin continuing to move forward landing the one two and this is before kind of dropping him and then we got to see some of that great skill from Kurt on the mats he was looking for an arm bar then rolled got the head in into an arm triangle choke from his back beautiful submission to win that fight in the second round and it's and it was against a really tough Austin Hubbard that we've seen in some of his fights he can compete with the regional lower level of the UFC lightweights which makes me confident that even with his age Kurt does look very very good as a professional Hubbard two takedowns in that first round but to note when Hubbard landed the takedown and we see this a little bit in Paul and Baugh's career is that he gets back up he is very active on the mat in transitioning to positions that are more positive for him until he can get back to his feet and he even lands submissions from the bottom he's kind of willing to go to the mat because his jujitsu skills and his grappling game are very very elite but he doesn't give significant damage in these positions if there is somebody that is going to land the takedowns it will be on the Ogden side but again how much are you going to put into that it comes down to kind of how the judges are giving it to this fight but the effectiveness of the opponents grappling when they get him to the mat is very very minimal so that is a lot of positives on the underdog when it comes to Kurt Hollibach Trey Ogden might be one of the most well-rounded lightweights out there he doesn't super excel in any one skill when it comes to his game he can grapple and he can strike and his fight IQ is honestly some of the best and you can kind of understand why as he is the main coach for his gym marathon MMA so he is training actively he does say this in interviews as well he's training he is fully immersed in mixed martial arts thought as both a coach and a fighter he has extremely good fight IQ and we can see it sometimes making his fights look a little less exciting while he's effectively implementing a game plan and stifling his opponents you see it against Zell Huber a long elite stand-up striker and Ogden kind of froze him out of the fight completely out striking the long tall opponent and we saw in the Prado fight with Zell Huber that he's probably a fringe top 10 contender and I would say Zell Huber probably has more potential to reach the title with what his game is but Ogden on the day with a perfect game plan stifled him and took home a unanimous decision very very clearly then against moda sticking him with the jab he stuck moda with the jab over and over and over again every 15 seconds ogden would put a stiff jab in moda's face bruising up his nose shutting his eyes and this was paired with exceptional movement stepping outside of the way of any oncoming attacks from moda and this was also while picking craig times to shoot takedown attempts and using the takedown attempt as a threat in itself a clear example late in the second round he went into a shot 
quickly recognizing it wasn't probably going to land him to a dominant position on the ground. So on the way back up, while Moto was defending, he got space and landed a beautiful combination, one of his best combinations of the fight, and really had nothing coming back because Moda needed to defend the grappling. And aside from a flash combination in the second round, Ogden's performance in this Moda fight was a masterclass. Now I know it's not against the elite of the elite of the division, but against a guy like Kurt Holabaugh, it's going to make an impact. The way that he breaks down fighters, the way he realizes what he needs to do, his strength versus his opponent's weaknesses, is a very, very serious threat in this fight, in my opinion. The fight really, really does come back to who hits first, and does Ogden land takedowns and hold Kurt down? And then we're gonna get to see some elite level jujitsu on the mat. Because Ogden is a black belt, so is Kurt Hollibaugh. The grappling exchanges here. Ogden, I think, is going to initiate the takedowns most of the time. I think he's going to get the takedowns most of the time. And then that mat work is going to be some of the better mat work that we've seen. Now, I know to a casual eye, it might seem like a boring fight. But I'm super interested to see who has the upper hand. So, when we get into the breakdown of who I think is going to win, honestly... I think it's near a 50-50. I think the only reason there's an underdog in this fight is because of the age and the way Ogden has been preparing, which you could argue is proper, but I think this is going to come down to a close decision probably, unless the way Trey Ogden was talking in interviews, he is going to work for a finish. But in my opinion, I think that this fight is going to see the final bell and it's really, really going to be close and up to kind of the judge's decision. But I see value when I in a 50-50 fight like that when you have an underdog at plus 135. Kurt's looking the best he ever has in a lightweight division. Vision. And I think both guys super well-rounded. It's going to come down to who's better on the night, who is training harder in this group. Is it Trey Ogden, who owns his own gym, has all of those outside things, but is so immersed in mixed martial arts? Or is it going to be Kurt Hollibaugh, who's kind of at the final stretch of his career, 37, also heavily focusing on mixed martial arts, developing his game. Both guys super well-rounded. I'm super interested. I understand why you would see a Trey Ogden better out there, because again, if Kurt does give up his back and he isn't as effective as sweeping back to the feet, then I think Trey Ogden could easily win a unanimous decision here. So I'm going to honestly take Kurt Hollibaugh in a fight that I think should be 50-50 because we have the underdog number. And then I'm also going to go over two and a half at minus 135. I went back and forth with myself on this. Ogden's talking like he wants a finish. He wants to probably secure a submission. But again, we have two black belts here. So it's going to take somebody tiring out gassing to really see that. And in a three round fight with both of these guys training as hard as they do, I think we're going to see the final bell. So over two and a half at minus 135. And I have Kurt Hollibaugh, but I can understand a Trey Ogden side. So it is a difficult bet, but I will take the Hollibaugh side at plus money. If you guys enjoyed this video, remember to smash that like button, subscribe to Combat Sports Central for more mixed martial art and combat content. And I will see you in the next one.